What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Trudz Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made these <sighs> beautiful, delicious, smashy, cheesy, amazing Oklahoma onion burgers on homemade brioche buns. <sighs> Coming up! This is some meat! Pat it dry! And what I got here is an absolutely beautiful chuck roast. Picked this up at my local HEB. And the reason it was vac sealed is because whenever I see a cut that looks like this, I have to pick it up. So I picked this up a while ago. It's been in my freezer. And I think it's gonna make for some absolutely outstanding burgers. So we're gonna go ahead and get this cut up. Oh God, just look at the marbling on that. Just like any other burger or sausage making video, we wanna cube this up so it'll chill down really quick and also fit into the meat grinder a little bit easier so nothing gets clogged up. And I've also got some brisket trim. This is from a brisket I trimmed up yesterday, so we're gonna throw all of this in there as well. Get a nice brisket and chuck blend. But as always, when making burgers, you can do whatever you like. You can do just brisket, just chuck. You could throw some sirloin or some short rib in there. And I even hear they sell pre-ground meat at the grocery store. I'll have to look into that. Beautiful. Into the freezer this goes. <sighs> Going with the five millimeter die today. And now that our meat is nice and cold, through the grinder we go. Beautiful grind on that, nice and pebbly, and quite a lovely fat content, I must add. Now at this point I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna give this a little bit of a knead, just a gentle mixing. And that's just gonna release some of the myosin, which really is gonna help bind this stuff together because we don't want the beef to be too crumbly, otherwise it'll come apart when we're trying to make burgers at the end. So just a gentle mixing is all you really need. I can feel it tacking up already. But again, definitely not to the same level you would for a meatloaf or a sausage or something like that. Maybe one minute of kneading. And as you can see, it's already starting to stick together, which is gonna give us some better burgers in the end. And still nowhere near as tough as store-bought ground beef, so. Perfect little burger ball. I'm gonna weigh these out in three ounce and six ounce balls. That way we can have some double smash burgers and one thick patty. See which one is better. And just like that, we've got ourselves Meatball Mountain. Next up, let's make some buns. Making a slightly different dough today, starting with some warm milk, some sugar, eggs, and our yeast. And give that a quick mix to break up the eggs followed by some all-purpose flour, some kosher salt, and a little bit of dough conditioner. And just let that come together. And this dough should be much shaggier than a normal dough at this point because it's got a really low hydration rate because we're making brioche. So what I did is I dropped the liquid content to make up for all the extra butter that's gonna be going in here, which is in fact the next step. So I'm gonna start with a chunk of this, throw it in there, and then periodically throw all this butter in while it needs. And slowly but surely, it should start coming together. Once all your butter is added, we're gonna let this knead for a very long time. It's already been about 10 minutes and it's just now starting to come together. I was really worried for a minute there, but with all that extra butter in there, it takes a while for that gluten to develop. So just be patient. And just like that, finally, this dough is looking very nice. Beautiful, nice, supple, very buttery dough. I'm gonna form this into a ball and into a grease bowl it goes to double in size for the next hour or so. And after a lovely rise, out it comes. Boop. Beautiful stuff. Just gonna punch the air out of this. And then we're gonna divide it into little dough balls weighing about 100 grams each. And just like every other bun, we're gonna tuck it all underneath, all the seams going on bottom, and give it the old roll. Beautiful. Not gonna lie, folks, I've never made brioche before, and I don't think I'm doing it right, and I'm definitely taking some shortcuts. So we're gonna see how these come out. It is a much different dough than what I'm used to. A little bit greasy. It's as if it's mostly butter or something. Just gonna pat these down a little bit so they're a little more disc-like and a little less ball-like. But other than that, now we're gonna let these rise for another 45 minutes to an hour. After these have puffed up and are looking absolutely beautiful, we're gonna hit these with a quick little egg wash. This is one egg, one egg yolk, and a splash of water, just to add some nice color and sheen to these buns. And now into a 350 degree oven these go for probably about 20 minutes. Ooh, 
looking good. And of course, fresh out of the oven, we're gonna hit these with a little bit of some melted butter because I'm pretty sure these buns need some more butter in them. Definitely didn't get as tall as I was expecting these to get, but I think it'll still work out just fine. So now I'm gonna pop these onto a wire rack and let them cool. Our buns are ready, our burgers are ready, so all there's left to do is prepare our onions and get to cooking. But first, I'm getting a little bit thirsty. This video is brought to you by Still Austin. As you may know, I've recently taken an interest in starting a bourbon collection. And one of the first bottles to hit the shelf was, of course, Still Austin, because they are the closest distillery to my house. Located on St. Elmo Street here in South Austin, Still Austin Whiskey Company is a grain to glass distillery started in 2015. And their flagship products include The Musician, a straight bourbon whiskey, also available in cask strength. They've also got some really great gin. This is The Naturalist. And those of you who know me well know that I'm a big fan of gin. And they also have the artist Straight Rye, which is what I am sipping on today, and it is probably my favorite of the three. And the coolest part about Still Austin is their emphasis on sustainability and local sourcing. 100% of their corn, rye, and malted barley is all grown in Texas. And then they go one step further and take all the spent grains from the distilling process and give that back to Texas ranchers, which they use to feed cattle and all their other animals. And I've actually had some meat on the show that was fed Still Austin spent grains. He feeds all of his cows with the spent grain from Still Austin, who makes some great bourbons and gins here in town. Shout out Double J. And I must say, it was absolutely fantastic. The farmers help make the whiskey and then the Whiskey helps the ranchers grow the beef. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. As I mentioned, their distillery is located right here in South Austin, right on St. Elmo. And it really is a beautiful place. And they've got a super cool setup. And their tasting room is open six days a week, so you can try the spirits yourself or their unique line of cocktails. And not to mention, one of my favorite food trucks is located at Still Austin. Shout out Huckleberry Hospitality. Gotta love supporting local. Cheers. Mm. Again, big shout out to Still Austin. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And if you all haven't checked out their stuff, I highly recommend it. You can check out their website, stillaustin.com. And of course, on all the social medias, just look up Still Austin. And if you're ever in town, I'll meet you at the distillery. Thank you, Still. But of course, you can't have an onion burger without some onions. What I got here is one sweet onion. And for my research, that is the onion of choice for the Oklahoma onion burger. And we need to cut these as thin as possible. So it's time to bust out the old finger tip remover, the mandolin. I'm gonna put this thing on its thinnest setting and just go to town. Oh yeah, nothing to it, folks. Beautiful, got two onions in here, very nice and thin. And one thing I like to do is drop them into an ice bath. This is gonna improve their texture a little bit and also wash away some of that extra harshness that onions can have. But more importantly, keep them nice and fresh while we get everything else ready to make these burgers. Ooh, buttery. I gotta say, these buns definitely have a bit more denseness to them than my typical buns. You can just feel the weight of butter in there and they're kind of flaky, almost like a croissant. Oh, they smell so good though. Now, according to George Motes, hamburger legend himself, an Oklahoma onion burger has five main components, bun, meat, salt, cheese, and of course, our beautiful onions. I took these out of the ice bath and I squeezed them through some paper towels, get rid of all the extra moisture and they are just nice and fluffy, love it. So, I think it's time to assemble. And as far as cheese goes, of course, we're going with American and cheese, the only cheese for a burger, but I highly recommend trying to find some good stuff. This is what I use, it's from HEB, and it's not individually wrapped, and it's just got a much better texture and flavor than anything that's wrapped in cellophane. In my experience, I've tried a lot of American cheeses. I highly recommend trying to find the best stuff, maybe go to the deli counter. And if you don't like American cheese, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Love that engagement. Let's make some burgers. So as you can see here, I got my chud press heated up nice and toasty, smoking hot. And on we go with our beautiful little patties. Ooh, nice sizzle. We're gonna top these with a generous amount of some of our thinly sliced onions and smash them down. Nice hard smash on these folks. And because we're cooking so hot, this will not take long. Got about a minute, open this up. Got a little onion stickage on top. That is a okay with me. Put that back down. And this is when I like to season these. Just easier to eyeball the amount of salt when they're flattened out like this. And remember, you're seasoning your meat and your onions. So go a little heavier than you think. And once the onions on the outside have started to caramelize and everything is starting to look good, we're seeing some liquid pulling through. We're gonna go ahead and flip these over. Oh for a beautiful crust. I'm gonna immediately hit these with some cheese. And then in classic onion burger fashion, we're gonna place the buns right on top. And that's just gonna really allow all the steam from the burgers and the onions to come up and soften the buns and infuse them with all of that lovely flavor. And after just a few seconds, our cheese is nicely melted, our buns are nicely steamed, and I think it's time to assemble this burger. 
First burger down, second burger on top. And there we have it in all its glory, folks. The beautiful onion burger. We got some really dark caramelized onions on the outside. We still got some nice soft ones on the inside. Just, ooh. A little bit of every stage of onion cook has made it into this burger. Nice and cheesy. Beautiful steamed, freshly made brioche bun. Oh, and to make sure this one stays nice and warm while we make the other ones, bust out one of these guys. Little hamburger bag. Highly recommend picking some of these up. I got these on Amazon and it is such a nice little game changer for burgers. It's like something you get out of bowling alley. Just Trap all the steam in there, all the residual heat will make the buns even softer and keep it warm from when we're ready. And as for burger number two, go down with a little bit of oil. We're going for the six ouncer, which is a big boy. Top it tall with some onions. We smash. One of the beauties of the chud press is all the steam from the onions while this is closed is getting trapped in there and circulating around, helping this thing cook even quicker. Ooh, that's a big burger. I don't think my buns are big enough for that. <laughs> top bun down first, heel on top of that, and then I'm gonna put on this little cloche guy to help trap in some steam. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit of whiskey in there to help steam this thing up a little bit. Tell me that's not gonna be good, folks. Come on. Ooh, sight of beauty, folks, I tell ya. Yeah, I think I might need a bigger bun if I'm gonna make six ounces or maybe smash it a little less. But to be honest, <clears throat> I'm not mad about a heavy meat to bread ratio, I'll tell you what. Love it. I mean, what's not to like here, folks? Ooey gooey cheese, freshly made, homemade brioche buns, some crispy onions, smash burger beef, patties. Oh, I gotta dive in. I gotta say, folks, I'm pretty excited about this one. Everyone has been talking about the Oklahoma Onion Burger for so long now. It has taken the world by storm, and I can start to see why. Although, it's been a minute since I made a cheeseburger without putting a burger sauce or, you know, at least some mustard on there. But let's go ahead and see how this juicy, cheesy, oniony behemoth came out, shall we? Oh, mm. Oh, mm. Yeah, that's a fantastic burger. Oh, mm. So juicy, so cheesy. Mm. I mean, really, what's not to like about this, folks? Crispy onions, but on the inside, they're soft onions. That brioche bun is something else. Very buttery. I'm just gonna keep going. Oh. Mm. It needs nothing else. When I saw the rise of the Oklahoma Onion Burger, I was always thinking, yeah, that needs some mustard or at least a pickle or something, but once you actually eat one, it really comes together for a perfect bite. I can't explain it. It's juicy, it's tender, it's got that smash burger vibe, it's nice and cheesy, and the different textures from the different layers of onions being cooked at different times is just spectacular. Oh, mm. I get it now. Mm. Mm. The buttery bun helps. Damn. So good. The char from the onions that hit the flat top right off the bat that got almost burned, give it almost like a bacon vibe. Really cool. No bitterness, none of those off flavors that you'd expect from those black onions on the exterior here, but whew, all working together as one. Mm. Mm. Oh, don't know why I doubted it. Mm. As far as these buns go, they are decadent to say the least. They honestly look like croissants almost. They're so flaky and they're kind of a pain to make. They don't come together as easily and they're a lot more dense than the fluffy ones I usually make. And I thought more butter, more better for this burger, but it's a bit heavy. So I think if I was gonna make this again, I will be sticking with my normal buns. That's the way a burger should look, folks. Meat surrounding it like the rings of Saturn. Well, gotta give this a try, you know, for science. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm, so meaty. Definitely nothing wrong with this one, but I'd probably stick with a double. Although I do like that nice lacy burger edge on there. Mm, oh God. I think it just holds it together. I really never thought that a burger with this few ingredients could be that much better than the sum of its parts, but you know, here it is. Mm, 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 Cause I can't stop. Now, unfortunately, the official taste tester cannot have onions, so I'm gonna have to make her a special patty real quick. So I'm just gonna give this the old Hulk smash and just see what happens. That got real thin. Now, a lot of people claim that that's what a smash burger is supposed to look like with those super lacy edges. And I can agree, they're very tasty. I mean, you can see through that patty. So just know that that is in fact, very possible on the chud press. But uh, you know, I like my burgers with a little bit of bite, a little bit of meatiness to them. But of course that nice hard sear. But this is not for me. <laughs> 
All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make an absolutely fantastic Oklahoma onion burger on the Chud Press. I highly recommend giving this recipe a try. It really is worth the hype, and it's definitely a burger that I'm gonna make time and time again. And you definitely don't need to make your own scratch-made buns and grind your own meat and all that kind of stuff, but no matter what you're cooking on, I highly recommend giving this recipe a try because it is truly fantastic. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.